In today's video, you should learn about the length and midpoint of a segment, as well as constructing congruent segments and midpoints. So we're going to start with our vocab. These words should all be filled out on your vocab list by the time you're done uh, watching this video. The first postulate we're going to learn about, remember a postulate is just a statement that we accept as true and we can use in the future, is the ruler postulate. I only want to mention it because it might come up in the future, but it simply gives um, points on a line a measurement. So each point on the line corresponds with the real number. So if I lined up a segment and it started here and ended here, I could say that that segment was three centimeters long. It simply gives a measurement to, or a distance to a segment. Now that we've given a segment distance, we can talk about how to find those distances. On a line, we have two points, A and B. We can decide what the distance between A and B are using where those points are on the line. So if A, we're at, we'll give it a number, or a, a letter representing a number, say it's at 2, and point B is located at 6, to find the distance from A to B, we could either say 2 minus 6, which is negative 4, or 6 minus 2, which is 4, and we take the absolute value. So we need to kind of remind ourselves what is absolute value. Absolute value actually means a number's distance from 0. So negative 4, how many spaces is negative 4 from 0? It's 4. So we change that distance to positive because distances cannot be negative. So you'll figure this out the best by just practicing. So our first example says to find the length of BC. Anytime you have two letters without a symbol on the top, it's representing a measure. So the easiest way to do that, you could just count. If I'm starting at zero or at one and I'm counting to three, well, I move one, two spaces. Um, seeing it the other way, the distance from B to C, we'd take B's measure or B's location, which is one, subtract C's location which is 3. So 1 minus 3 gives us the absolute value of 2, which or negative 2, which is 2. Another example, if we wanted to look at A, C, uh, we would take the location of A, which is negative 2, minus the location of C, which is 3. Negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5. What is negative 5's distance from 0? We would change that to a positive 5. Realize you could just count that as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's how long segment AC is. Here's one more. You give it a shot. This one does have um, half marks. So from X to Y, we could start at X, which is at 1 half, 1 and a half, and count how many spaces spaces do we move to y? Well I moved one, two, three and a half. It also works with our absolute value. If I started at one and a half and I subtract five, I get to negative three and a half, take the absolute value. The length from x to y is three and one half. Here's x to z. We took you can start with either one. Since they labeled it xz, they started with x was location, negative, or one and a half, minus a negative three. A negative minus a negative becomes a positive, so we say one and a half plus three gives us four and a half. Four and a half's absolute value is four and a half. Now let's talk about what it means to be congruent. Congruent segments, we say, have equal measures, the same measure. So if PQ, this segment, were two inches long and RS is also two inches long, their measures are equal, so we say that they are congruent. So we use an equal sign to say their measures are equal, which tells us that the segments themselves are congruent. Anytime you use a congruent symbol, you will put the symbol on top of your segments. Anytime you use equal, you're talking about the measures, so you leave the bars off. When we look in a picture to show that those two segments are congruent, we use what we call tick marks. So since these have the same measure, I'll put a tick mark to show that those are equal to each other or congruent. Now this one's the tough one. This is the big point for today. We want to talk about what it means to be between. So if I said 
B is between A and C. That means that it is on the same line and it's placed between A and C. Um, if we looked at the whole distance from A to C, when we put that point B on it, it's pretty much like we split the segment in two. We split it into this small piece and this small piece. Well, a part plus a part always will equal a whole. So let's go back to that between idea. I've got some little friends here. We've got our piggy bank and the rubber ducky and we've got the blueberries over here. Well right now I would say that the blueberries are not between the rubber ducky and the uh, piggy bank because it's off here to the side. So if we want the blueberry to be blueberries to be between our friends we want to use that word collinear meaning they could all sit on the same line. So keep that in mind when we talk about what it means to be between. If they're not in a line, they're not between. So they got to be collinear. All right, when we go back to this equation, you will use this over and over again. So I would remember part plus part equals whole. So remember there's not a bar here, so that means we're talking about a measure. So let's give us an example. Our first problem says that G is between F and H. So I would start with drawing a picture. So I know I have a segment FH. And then it tells us that G is between that somewhere. It doesn't say it's right in the middle, but it's somewhere between. So then I'll draw a point G, and then I'll go up to my problem. And it says the length of FG is 6, and the length of FH, the whole thing, is 11. So I'm going to add that to my picture. FH, the whole length is 6, and GH, or er, is 11, and GH is 6. So now we're going to set up an equation. Just like we did um, in our notes here, we are going to set up this equation, part plus part equals whole. So we're going to break apart what are the parts. Well, the whole is FH, which will be equal to a part FG plus GH. So we have a whole equals part plus part. Now all we do is substitute. We're going to plug in the measures they gave us. I know that FG is 6 and FH is 11. So if I plug those numbers in, it says find GH. That's the only variable I have left. So for algebra, to get GH by itself, we want to subtract 6 and get that GH is 5. Let's take it a step further. What if we use um, some variables? Same idea, they gave us the picture this time. M is between N and O, so somewhere in the middle here. And we're looking for NO's measure. Currently, we don't know NO's measure because it has a variable. So we're going to start out with the same equation we did before. Part plus part equals whole. So we had one part was NM, another part was MO, and those together equal NO. Just like we did before, even though there's variables, we're still going to substitute those given values. NM was 17, so I'm going to replace that. MO is 3x minus 5, and NO is 5x plus 2. Now all we do is simplify. On the left side of the equation, we can combine like terms. We have a 3x, that's the only x, so we keep it. 17 plus a negative 5 gives us 12. We didn't do over anything over here. Next, we can subtract 2 from both sides to move all of our numbers to the left. And then simplify, subtract 3x from both sides to get all of our x's on one side. Divide by 2, and we get that x is 5. Now remember, our question asked for what is NO. Well, previously we saw that NO was 5x plus 2. X was that missing piece, so we can take X's value and plug it in for NO's measure. So if NO is 5X plus 2 and X equals 5, sub substitute 5 in for X and then simplify. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 gives us NO's length to be 27. Now let's talk about what a midpoint is. If we look at the word, you see this mid, meaning middle. So midpoint is the point 
in the middle. So if we have a segment AB and M is its midpoint, we say that it's halfway between A and B. That point is cutting that segment in half or bisecting. When I hear the word bisect, I think it sounds like dissect, like cut. Bi, like bicycle, means two, so bisect means to cut into two. So if AB, the whole segment, is six, and M is halfway between, then the first half is three, and the second half is three. We can use that same knowledge to solve problems, just like we did our other problems. If we have a segment EF, and D is its midpoint, we know that this half is equal to this half. So if we wanted to solve for x, we know that one half is equal to the other half. ED is equal to DF. Just like our um, between problems, now I take their measures. ED is 4x plus 6, and DF is 7x minus 9. Plug those in, and now all we do is algebra. So we take the uh, numbers, or I'd like to start with the variables. Take the smaller of your two variables, subtract them from both sides. Then take your number, 9, and add it to both sides. And then to get x by itself, we divide by 3. And so x is 5. Always go back up to your problem to see what did it ask me to do. Find ED, DF, and EF. Well, that means I need to plug my missing number, x, into each of those values. So if ED was given to me as 4x plus 6, well, now x is 5, so I'm going to plug 5 in for x and simplify. For df, I'm going to plug 5 in for x again and simplify. Since those two halves are supposed to be equal, you should get that those measures are the same. To get the whole, a whole equals a half plus a half. So ed was 26, the other half is the same, 26. So the whole measure is 52. As you can see, this section is pretty heavy on algebra. As long as we can understand the between concept and the midpoint concept, everything else should be similar to what you did in Algebra 1. We'll practice these skills in class. I'll see you soon.